Good morning, Sabbath greeting. Why am I filled with such doubt about whether I should be recorded because I come before the mighty God? the one true living God, the God of Isaac and the God of Abraham, the God of Moses. Good morning. Uh, I have to come before him. Now I am coming before him, asking him, will thou sustain me? Are you the lifter of my head? I live in a country and a nation that's the most godless of all the countries I've been in and they're pretty godless. Not that they... Not, not, not they don't, that God isn't real. Not that God isn't there. Not that God isn't who God says he is. Not that they're godless, if they would but turn their heads, if they would but turn their ways, if they would but call on him, he would be their God, they would be his people. So not godless in the fact that the potential serve God isn't there but godless as in they don't do the things that, that, that God lays out that God speaks about that God impresses upon, that God calls us to, they'll do anything but that. They'll dismiss him out of hand to his face. Before his throne, they will say, we don't need you. We don't need you in our education. We don't need you in our lives. We don't need you in our systems. We don't need you anywhere because we're sufficient. We have guns. We have televisions and computers and mobile phones. And in this, uh, a, a brain damaged, broken idiot. of a man walks before him holding a cross and a Bible and, uh, and calling out and crying out in a situation about to lose his house, about to lose his wife, about to lose his life, lost his profession. Will you sustain me? Are you the lifter of my head? As the song goes, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. I... I See, know, and hear. The 
Lord of hosts and the King of kings, that God, the God of the Bible, unfolds his majesty daily before me, not because I'm special, but because he, who he is. A refuge, a place of comfort, a guide. But in my social circle, in the convocation of the people I come in, churchgoers, non churchgoers, it's as if I'm dumb not enough to I know I've shared the gospel with people even if it's just to make them think I've had that feedback directly And people charge off and they do their own thing and it's not according to his word and will. And I'm embroiled in a, I don't know, struggle, conflict. I know I'm not at war.
exactly. I'm stood outside the house. I can hear music, singing. I don't know if it's to God or not. A known God or an unknown God. I live in an age of diverse worship. Diverse culture. Those people that say they worship the triune God, the God of the Bible, Jesus, that wants Jesus, that wants the Holy Spirit, that wants God. Even just in that iteration, there is diversity from the beautiful and trying to the downright despotic evil. Am I in hell? To the point that I ask, am I in hell? If God is my... I was going to say footstool, that's wrong. If I, if I am God's footstool, and if he is the lifter of my head and my sustainer, I need not to be in this position of about to lose my house and about to lose my wife. I mean, if I, I can lose my house and lose my wife. But I find myself with the psalmist saying, shall I go down to hell? Will the dust praise you? How does this serve you, Lord? I called upon you to tie a millstone around my neck, and yet I live. I call upon you to remove the things that plague me, and yet I live. Call upon you night and day, and yet I live. Oh, I'm not perfect. You know my sins. You know my sin. And you have forgiven me for them. You have cast me down for them. This is hell. The torture of knowing you and knowing you to be who you are. In a life where <sighs> yeah, I'm cerebrally, mentally. Emotionally slaughtered every single day. I love you, Lord. I sing for you, praise you. I minister for you, I work for you, I build a church. I... <laughs> is it for me or is it for myself? I've asked that question. I call upon your name, you answer, you reveal yourself. I 
I feel like I'm alone. I feel like I'm always. at odds with the people I live with. My whānau, as the Māori put it, my family, not just the blood, blood relations, friends, wives. Oh, well, we're not good enough. And yet those that are good enough or claim to be good enough for those that walk and minister and preach and teach they do so counter to this bible counter to your word wow oh, be not judgmental The word is unfolding as it should. We're just at a time point where we're away from the word. I can't accept that, Lord. I can't accept that. Or oh. there's no need for me to be sacrificed. Your son was sacrificed. There's no need to go down into Sheol. Your son went down into Sheol. There's no need for another Jesus because Jesus was Jesus. is Jesus. What's this recording about, you know? I find hope in the morning. Chinese people I'm trying to find a place in society where I can be upright, pure, righteous, good, holy, justified, sanctified, I'm craving after the things of the world. I need money, I need a house, I need a life. That, that somehow reflects the Western, Western worldview of what a life is. Even the biblical worldview of what a life is without fully committing. With a bit of embellishment, an extra on the side, a bit of reward. more than what Christ has given me already. I'm voicing these things. I pray it's not. I do my best to avoid the realities and actualities. But I come here and I think, oh, there's Rhiannon here. I look upon your daughters and they are fair. I'm not bitter. Am I bitter? Am I upset? Upset is probably a better word. You know that. Twisted snake of relationship. With my relationship. my hatred, my upset, my dislike, my stupidity, my inability. Well, I'm getting there for a long time. Uh, for a year or so, I've been, been in the house of a couple in Tishirangi, a place just down the road. 
and in corners of this couple's lives there were idols, Buddhas, statues. When I first went there, I, I prayed against them. I prayed against their influence of the dark spirits that are in that home, that are obviously having negative effects on the family. And they went, palpably felt that it changed. And then they came back. I saw this guy, the father of the house, and I saw his carnality, and I saw his arrogance. And I prayed against it, harder and further, against the idols that he rose up to replace the ones that were taken down. I mean, really, like a step up of the evil. The things counter to God. And then a few weeks ago we went there and the man had left. I shared with the parents who lived in part of the same building. We don't usually see them, but we shared with the father of the woman. The mother left with the two children. Shared that I was thankful that he'd gone, that if, if it need be, what would be better would be the influence, the bringer of those idols, the believer in that anti Christian philosophy. It's better for him to go than them to try and stay together. Gone. And yesterday we went to clean that house again. And the sickening dawning, the sickening reality, the thing that I can't see, the thing that I, I, I automatically put the trust in is the woman. And we go into the house, and I, and I say at the bottom of the stairs where there are one of the gold idols used to be, I say to the father before we go, I'm so, I'm so glad that's gone. It, 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 it told me that the, the man had taken his idols with him, that the house would be at peace and rest, that the family would be safe, that my prayers would be answered. And we got into the house and all the idols had been raised up higher than they ever were before. You see, it was the woman and not the man. Oh, he was carnal. No doubt about that. Chasing after his cars and motorbikes. Not thinking on the things of God. But the Jezebel spirit, it was attached to the woman. And the Buddhas and the dream catchers and the demonic things were poured over that house like water. I'm such a fool. I asked for God to sustain me, but in what? Being stupid. Being prejudiced. being biased, putting women up and on a pedestal. Wanting my mother back. Wanting her to be released from the prison that she was in. Wanting her to be saved. My 
and all around her is hell and horrible people. Instead of accepting that her choice was to be where she was. Instead of accepting that she was one of the horrible people. Or do I have a hope that she's saved? She prayed a sinner's prayer in, when I was in India over the phone in the middle of the night for me. You see, those powers that be, those powers that are, those powers and potentates, they're rampant. They're rampant through my life. In the places of work, people behave in awful ways. Places of where I live, people behave in awful ways. I go to the churches and people are kind, but it's more that they're accommodating. They just make a kind of arm's length allowance for a friend and social group. I've been preaching the word of God, the gospel, for over a year. I share that I've seen signs and wonders, beautiful things. I've met the Lord in these places of refuge, that he's made these places of refuge for me. That I'm in a relationship with him that I don't deserve, but because of his grace and goodness, he's causing me to walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Well, it's come down to that he has to sustain me from this point forward. You have to sustain me from this point forward, Lord. I have to ask, are you my sustainer? Are you the lifter of my head? Or do I have to go down into the shield, to the next layer of unpleasantness? Lost house, living on the street. What credentials do I have? In order to preach the gospel, what credentials do I need? A pack and a sword, I've carried them, I've lost my pack. The sword, the word of God. I prayed for that father yesterday. I'm not... Oh. I am looking for unmerited favour. I am looking for that righteousness, for that upstandingness, so I can stand before my accusers, the mockers of you, and, and be upright. Now I can reach into the churches that are appealing me to me, the places in India where life really is like, you know, and Pakistan. I'm looking to you to answer the prayers of those that have, have said prayers to you. I'm looking for you to be my sustainer, the lifter of my head. 
I, I see you touch the treetops with the sunshine. Beautiful. I feel you move the breeze to like a caress, gentle caress. It's amazing. It's not bread and water in that world that I've just walked from. In a world that judges on bread and water. I've asked you to bring the destruction. Even if I'm on the wrong on the wrong side of the threshold. Because of my sin. I've asked you to toss me with a millstone tied around my neck into the ocean. And I beg you, Lord, I beg you, Lord. Are you my sustainer? Are you the lifter of my head? I have heart palpitations. I, I, I look to you for life. I claim the things of Jesus in my life and over my life. I claim the things of your spirit. But I need establishing in that, Lord. You know I need establishing in that. Or they're all lost from my blood family to my family here, from churches to churches, they're all lost, Lord. And if that's what you're showing me, if that's what I did wrong, I'm sorry we're all lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what a reading. I'm Ezekiel 17. <clears throat> These were the words of the Lord to me. Man, speak to the Israelites. In allegory and parable, tell them that these are the words of the Lord God. A great eagle with broad wings and long pinions in full plumage, richly patterned, came to Lebanon. He took the very top of a cedar tree, plucked its highest twig, and he carried it off to a land of commerce and planted it in a city of merchants. Then he took a native seed and put it in the nursery ground. And he set it like a willow, a shoot beside abundant water. It sprouted and became a vine, sprawling low along the ground and bending its trailing boughs towards him, with its roots growing beneath him, so it became a vine. It branched out and put forth shoots. But there was another great eagle with broad wings and thick plumage, and this vine gave its roots a twist towards him. It pushed out its trailing boughs towards him, seeking drink from the bed where it was planted. Though it had been set in good ground beside abundant water, that it might bear shoots and be fruitful and become a noble vine. Tell them that these are the words of the Lord God. Can such a vine flourish? Will not its roots be broken off and its fruit be stripped and all its fresh sprouting leaves wither until it is uprooted and carried away with little effort? and few hands if it is transplanted can it flourish will it not be utterly shriveled as though the touch of the east wind on the bed as though by the touch of the east wind on the bed where it ought to sprout that reading was given to me when i first came back from india to the uk and i'll continue this time the parable explained these are the words of the lord to me say to that rebellious people do you not know what this means the king of babylon came to jerusalem took its king and its officers and had them brought back to him at babylon he took a prince of the royal line and made a treaty with him putting him on his oath he took away the chief men of the country so that it should become a humble kingdom unable to raise itself but ready to observe the treaty and keep it in force but the prince rebelled against him and sent messengers to egypt asking for horses and men in plenty can such a man prosper? Can he escape destruction if he acts in this way? Can he violate a covenant and escape? As I live, says the Lord God, I swear that he shall die in the land of the king who put him on the throne. He made light of his oath and violated the covenant he made with him. He shall die in Babylon. Pharaoh will send no large army, no great host to protect him in battle. No siege ramp will be raised, no watchtower put up nor will the lives of many men be lost. 
he has violated a covenant and has made light of his oath. He has submitted, and yet he did all these things. He shall not escape. These, then, are the words of the Lord God. As I live, he has made light of the oath he took by me and has violated the covenant I made with him. I will bring retribution upon him. I will cast my net over him, and he shall be caught in its meshes. I will carry him to Babylon and bring him to judgment there, because he has broken faith with me. In all his squadrons every commander shall fall by the sword. Those who are left will be scattered to the four winds. Thus you shall know that it is I, the Lord, who have spoken. And then, first church worship in New Zealand. I believe this is in Puka Kelly. These are the words of Lord, the Lord God. I too will take a slip from the lofty crown of the cedar and set it in the soil. I will pluck a tender shoot from the topmost branch and plant it. I will plant it high on a lofty mountain, the highest mountain in Israel. I will put out branches, bear its fruit. It will put out branches, bear its fruit, and become a noble cedar. Winged birds of every kind will roost under it. They will roost in the shelter of its sweeping boughs. All the trees of the countryside will know that it is I, the Lord, who will bring low the tall tree and raise the low tree high, who dry up the garden, the green tree, and make the dry tree put forth buds. I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. These are the words from 18. These are the words of the Lord to me. What do you all mean by repeating this proverb in the land of Israel? The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall never again be used in Israel. Every living soul belongs to me. Father and son are like a mine. The soul that sins shall die. Consider the man who is righteous and does what is just and right. He never feasts at mountain shrines, never lifts his eyes to the idols of Israel, never dishonours another man's wife, never approaches a woman during her periods. He oppresses no man. He returns the debtor's pledge. He never robs. He gives bread to the hungry and clothes to those who have none. He never lends either at discount or at interest. He shuns injustice and deals fairly between man and man. He conforms to my statutes and loyally observes my laws. Such a man is righteous. He shall live, says the Lord God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I don't know. I'm calling upon God. I'm saying that I'm not righteous. He still shows forth his hand. It's who he is. I may find peace in these places of rest and solitude, not my walk in the world is at a loss. I pray for you a good week, a blessed Sabbath. And an upright walk in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Well, I guess he uses the weak to lead the strong. I don't guess, I know. Touch it. Christ is my reward. Redeemer. My refuge. My strong tower. I guess I'm just being stripped of all the floss, all the fluff, all the nonsense. It does leave me. This world is overwhelming in its lostness. 
for 2,000 years into the... end of days, the passing of Christ into the plan of salvation unfolding and revealed and a world in a sick state sick something that's good not being done if anything God revealed to me that Boy, what time he revealed himself, the full towering majesty of black clouds and thunder and lightning and speed rays of light. And his words for me were simple and few. And he said, my son is dying. day to the Lord is as a thousand years. He believed that. They were only the second day from Christ's death. It's the end of the day where he went through the deepest part of Sheol. It's the end of the Sabbath day that he spent interred in the ground. It's the end of the day of the deepest part of that battle a day that must grieve grieve our Lord cause him to grieve cause him to suffer the loss that's why the world is the way it is That's why he can reveal himself in splendor and majesty in so many ways, in that subtlety of that fullness of grief. He can still be who he is because he's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. in terms of dispensing the fullness of his joy the fullness of his blessing the fullness of his love is withdrawn and what we have is man lifting up his hands and making hay making war, carrying out atrocity after atrocity, building churches, playing games, always pretended, always dressing up like children, pompous, arrogant, proud, foolish, wasteful, greedy, Selfish, mean. Like children, errant children. Wow. I can tell you the frequency. I can't tell you about the breeze. I can tell you. I can't describe it. Grains of sand at my fingertips, the subtle play of the breeze and the trees above me, the blueness of the sky, the calm of the morning, the wonder and splendour and beauty of it all. And that's why I'm upset. It's like I can't share it, it's like I'm in a glass box looking at the beauty of the world, looking at its unfolding splendour and majesty, seeing its potential. And just being surrounded by people, by children who are 
set in their ways to do everything but. And I don't know what to do. I have his footstool. And he is the lifter of my head. And I don't know what to do. Have a good time, be nice to each other. I love you. Despite what they say, what you might think. That's what I, I'm trying to share. I'm saying to God that he's not just made a friend of me. He's made a fan. I'm a fan of his. I, I, I love the Lord. And I want to share that. I want to, you know, that's what makes me enthusiastic these times. He has been with me and blessed me intimately and remade me and, and cured me and healed me and loved me and lifted me and all these things of splendor and wonder and amazing grace even yet when I was a sinner wow that's what makes me enthusiastic it's what people dislike about me They're, oh well you know I've got my work, walk and work with God Who's he to have a different understanding? <laughs> what have you done? I say I'm an eleventh hour Christian and my coin is shiny. My coin is splendid. And it's the same coin that people have got. They've been in the field 10, 20, 30, 40 years. But theirs has become tarnished. They've put it in the pocket while they've got on with other stuff, whatever it is. And I'm like, Look at it. Look. Jesus Christ saved my life. It's amazing. He shared, he spared yours. He saved you. Brilliant, isn't it? Let's praise him. Let's pray to him. Let's worship him. Let's come together. Let's make a joyful noise for the Lord. And as one, as one, they say, no, no, that's not my Jesus. You'd love him like a child loved him if you loved him the way I loved him. You'd see him near and far, high and low, moment by moment. As a nice song. And you'd sing to him and praise him and worship him. And you'd think that was first in your life, not all the other stuff. And that's where we're lost. That's how far we've come 2,000 years. Moment by moment. They're losing our way, moment by moment. We're going astray, moment by moment. We're building ourselves, moment by moment. A place unto hell. I'm just here to try and tell you to stop. To encourage you, to lift you, to to convince you to to be a herald for him who saves, who died and rose again, whose grace is more than sufficient. You could, moment by moment, degree by degree, turn us from our 
sin, from our wickedness, from our lostness, from our pain and shame and suffering, from our certainty of doom, into a place of glory and splendor to be that tree that the birds come and nest in. It's his work. It's what he's done. I'm not anything other than a wretch saved by grace. And maybe the worst of wretches in terms of my walk in this life. But wow. Even if I go down into hell, and I believe that's what this place is to me. Yet the dust, my dust, shall praise him. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul. Rejoice, take joy my king in what you hear may it be a sweet sweet sound in your ear I love you And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound. May it be a sweet, sweet sound. May it be a sweet. Sweet sound in your There was a time when I was uh, had a back injury and I never thought I would walk again at one point. Well, for a good while. And God, who was with me and is with me, he taught me to reshuffle my back, my spine from top to bottom in order to, I don't know, straighten it out, in order to give me a, a kind of sense of balance that was, you know, I don't deserve any of this. And it was his work, his will. And it's beautiful, it's beautiful knowing him. It's beautiful how delicate and 
intimate that can be. And now I can lie on a log. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I can see and feel his presence and feel the warmth of that memory and know that he's helping my back and keeping me straight and upright. In fact, when I get up from here, which is soon, he will be the one lifting my head. The sustaining. Well... What does it Paul say? In times of plenty, in times of famine or drought. I have learned to be content in here, but that's what I need to push into. This place is awful, awful. The worst place by a long way that I've ever been. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah. So you say, oh, apart from the beautiful resplendent trees and peace and all that matter and stuff. Yeah, to have his blessings and to dishonour him. That's like being a vine whose roots twist towards another. It's like breaking the covenant when he's giving you blessings to, to say, well, we don't need him. And that's the world I'm faced with from top to bottom. That's the country I live in. We'll do it our way. We like the book. We like the blessings, all the trimmings. But we want it our way, not his. We want to interpret the Bible to suit us, to suit our cosmic worldview. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me strength. Give me strength. How do I share it all? I don't know. I've got up now. Oh, I feel amazing. And it's one of those things. I'm maligned, much maligned. It's not only just being and feeling that you're in a world that's, or in a country or a place that's extravagantly, extra, extravagantly against the word of God. But how the, even your friends come at you and, oh, you're this and you're that. And they're growly faces and they're growly ways. And they go off and do their own thing and you feel like a piece of trash crushed up and beaten and maligned what did they miss what are they missing who are they kidding i upset them because i walk in past of righteousness for his name's sake god has made me righteous it's not my doing, so you, 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 they sit and they watch me close and they go, oh, you're not this, you're not that. You're not right about that, you're not right about this. And it's like, well, no, obviously not. That's the whole point of being saved by grace. Unmerited favour. Wow. I talk about the, you know, the excellence of his love and the beauty of his message and the, and, the, and the honesty of his son and the light, try and shine the light. To who? To people in worldly power and authority who say, no, I'm this and I'm that, and you're not this and you're not that. Good grief. Um, is it a good grief? raft of former employers who are who consider themselves more righteous than God
well that's me that's my sharing of today my testimony the Lord is my refuge he is the lifter of my head the sustaining well that comes down to him and it comes down to you I have a place of peace you can look it up on a place of peace auckland.weebly.net.com place of peace auckland.weebly.com it's up there in the trees these are the walks if I can let the rooms out just for a few weeks I can get out of this situation I'm in financially that I'm I'm lost I'm, I'm at rent tribunal I'll lose the house I'll uh, <clears throat> be forced to live in my car not be forced to no, that's what I'll do I'll live in my car there's people all around Auckland doing all the stories you hear about this being the most salubrious and best city to live these people are, are, are dying in their arrogance in their indifference, as Derek Prince puts it, in their pride, all the things that they're imbibing and bringing in from these other cultures that they coexist with. Do they realise it? Do they know it? Well, when it's presented to them, they toss their heads and they look to their million dollar houses and their dogs and idols and they legal system and all the things that great things that their nation has done which is very little and I don't mean to belittle those things that, those great things that this nation has done but this is a young nation and it's one that's going in a direction with all speed and alacrity and in the fullness of knowledge of rejecting Jesus as the Lord and Saviour, of removing Jesus as the Lord and Saviour. Why? Because he's a stumbling block. And that's the situation the world's in. You know, the Pope is pushing for a one-world religion. The world, you know, if we look at it in a liberal, sentimented you know, fairness for all and everything's equal and all's the same. We have to remove Jesus. They have to remove Jesus. Because Christ crucified is a stumbling block. It's foolishness. It's contrary to that worldview. You can't have it that Jesus is the only way to heaven when there are many paths to heaven that's what they say but the truth and it is the truth and that's what all you have to accept you can have a one world religion as long as it's Christianity <laughs> as long as you reject your foreign gods as long as you're you know, prepared to accept Jesus as the son of God do you call him Allah or the creator or maker or whatever he's made a way how rude and how arrogant in a society of intellectuals in a society of you know without war with electricity that stays on and water you know, you can turn the tap on and off and out it comes. To try and denude and dissuade and dishonour God by saying, well, you're not like that, really. That doesn't suit me. It doesn't suit them. All the warnings are there. All the pointers.
I remember being in an alpha course, my first alpha course in Gibraltar. It's a pretty dark place and a pretty dark time. And one of the discussions in the upper room was the Methodist church, a real refuge of calm and a sea of iniquity. Held in that, that comfortable warmth of believers and proto believers coming together. We talked about multi faith. And our woman leaned forward and looked at me. She went, But my God is a jealous God. And when it comes to Allah and God, I know that that's, you know, they're the same. That God has flocks outside of the flock of Israel. And that he's bringing them together to be, Jesus is bringing them together to be one. But I know there's arrogance and pride in nations, in this nation that God will fiercely and jealously guard against. And that's, um, you know, that's what I want to be a herald to. That's why I'm asking the Lord for sustenance, because to stand here, to talk, to be looked at, to be listened to, You need to have the credentials. The faith of Daniel. Um, well. <laughs> I have that. I can wield that. house, the home, the car, the Fano. <clears throat> My closest advisor. <laughs> or ensconced in churches of deception <laughs> in philosophies of error <laughs> my sheep are oh, scattered Oh, Lord. And I am desolate. <laughs> and that's why I need his, his sustenance. His provision. Your provision, Lord. Dynamis and Exusia. I don't know how. I don't know how. I'm glad I know the one that does. And I trust he is unfolding everything in his good and opportune time. In Jesus' name. I oh, mean, if you have a, a will or a urge, then I'll be preaching at Manicow, Maine at 2.30.
in the city of Auckland in the country of New Zealand in the year of our Lord 5780 2020 in the decade of proclamation I'll be proclaiming the gospel in the second part message on the strong delusion hey it will not be attended uh, it may not be attended by anyone who knows me but by Christ I'll preach it anyway you can also look it up on uh, line it's a turning point sermon 69 and I don't mean that in a crude way the way the two digits interact is a juxtaposition and what I know and what you can get a sense of from this morning's ramble I need a juxtaposition a flip in Jesus name if you can't contribute financially if there is a link on the Carpe Cruxis website then please contribute your prayers let's call upon the Lord the King of Kings the God of Isaac the God of Abraham the God of Daniel and Isaiah and ask and Ezekiel and ask him to flip the script <laughs> for his glory Amen Wow I can't write that a bird I associate with the Holy Spirit <laughs> just on my God on my yes right at that moment thank you Lord thank you friends well, sitting down to a good breakfast, and uh, you know, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm praying to the Lord, and I'm overwhelmed by the, His response, by what He's sharing uh, from the, the scripture that was open. You can see the photograph. I've only picked that in prayer uh, from law to faith. And what of the law? It was added to make wrongdoing a legal offence. It was a temporary measure pending the arrival of the issue to whom the promise was made. It was promulgated through the angels, and there was an intermediary. But an intermediary is not needed for one party acting alone, and God is one. So God. You know, it's enough of a witness to himself to be himself because he's three in one. Fantastic. I mean, wow. And then the um, parable of the uh, vineyard uh, whose owner <clears throat> goes away and lets it out to tenants and those tenants, uh, when he returns, he, he sends his servants to the tenants. So the prophets are sent, the word is sent to the tenants. It's rejected over and over again. And finally, he sends his son. He says they won't reject to him, but they do. And this is so much about the life that we're leading. I'm so thankful for the life that we're leading. And I'm so honoured to be uh, blessed by the Holy Spirit with guidance and instruction. I mean, that's just beautiful. I couldn't have come up with that. I don't know enough of the Bible. And yet, in the last few days, how those things have sewn together to the Scripture now that it was open today is relevant to the Scriptures before. And that ties up that, that learning. Beautiful, wonderful teacher, saviour, friend. So, uh, breakfast time and uh, Sabbath beckons. Be blessed. Amen.